Hi, my name is Leah Stark, and today I'm going to share a version of the Sleeping Beauty that I share with my little ballerinas before we get to dance it out in ballet class, where we use very exaggerated miming to tell our story. This version was created by Peter Chivkowski and Maurice Petpa as a ballet. They based their storyline on the German Grimm version, Briar Rose, and Charles Perrault's Sleeping Beauty from France. Once upon a time, there was a king and queen who wanted a child. When they were finally blessed with a little girl, they named her Aurora and threw a big party to celebrate. They invited all the fairies in the land. They invited the enchanted garden fairy, the forest fairy, and the crystal fountain fairy. These fairies were very gentle and graceful, and they danced for the princess, and each of them gave her a special gift. The golden vine fairy came in. She was a sharp, energetic fairy, and she gave Princess Aurora her gift. The canary fairy came, and she flitted and floated about the room as fast as she could and gave Princess Aurora her gift. Then, suddenly, the evil fairy Carabas burst in on her carriage with her evil henchmen. She was furious at not being invited to the party. And to get her revenge, she told the king and queen the Princess Aurora would prick her finger on a spindle and... Die. The king and queen tried to apologize, but in a flash, Carabas was gone. But the lilac fairy had not given her gift. So she tells the king and queen, Princess Aurora will not prick her finger and die. She will simply fall asleep for a hundred years to be awoken by a prince. The king and queen were very grateful, but just in case, they banned all the spindles from the land. Years go by, and on Princess Aurora's 16th birthday, the king and queen again throw a lavish party where they invite all the princes from the neighboring kingdoms. Princess Aurora is very excited, and she asks each of the princes if they would please, please dance with her. And of course they do. Each of them hands her a beautiful rose. And as she's dancing, an old woman approaches. She hands Princess Aurora a spindle. Princess Aurora has never seen one before, so she takes it, but then she pricks her finger. At first she's fine, so she goes back to dancing. She's dancing, but then she suddenly dances faster and faster and faster as she becomes dizzy and then collapses on the floor. Carabas reveals herself as the old woman laughs and triumphs and vanishes. The king and queen are horrified. Oh no, our princess is dead. But the lilac fairy tells them, no, the princess is not dead. She is merely sleeping. And so the lilac fairy puts everybody else in the castle to sleep. And just like that, a hundred years fly by. One day, a prince is hunting in the woods near the enchanted castle. The lilac fairy sees him and knows he's the one to break the spell. So she sends him a vision of the princess in her castle. After seeing her, the prince simply must find her, so he begs the fairy, please, please, show me to her. The lilac fairy leads the way, but when they get to the castle, they are confronted by the evil Carabas. The prince fights her, and with the help of the lilac fairy, defeats her. Then he rushes to the princess's side, where he wakes her with a kiss. Then everybody in the castle wakes up, overjoyed to find that the prince and princess have fallen in love. The king and queen give the prince permission to marry Princess Aurora, and they have a gigantic wedding celebration. At the celebration, they invite special guests from all over the kingdom and neighboring kingdoms. Cinderella comes with her prince. Princess Le Florain comes with her prince, who is right now a bluebird under an evil spell. Puss in Boots comes, and he brings the white cat, but they spend the entire time fighting. Little Red Riding Hood also comes, but the wolf is hot on her tail. She begs him, please don't eat me, please don't eat me. But he still tries to get her, but she gets away. It is a grand, spectacular, exciting party, and the prince and Princess Aurora are very happy. And so they live happily ever after the end. So now, if you ever go see the ballet, you will know what's going on, even though they don't say a word the entire time. Thank you for listening.